there. Right there. Those are some screw jacks that go through and we'll tighten that nut up when we get it all set. Now this will come out. We'll just set it right here in this hole. Well, we're back down to Paradise Point. We're going to try to get these walls up today. Everything is laid out. We have our plates laid out and we have a stack of studs. These are cut a shorter than a 92 and 5 8 standard length stud for an 8 foot wall but we will not have an 8 foot wall on this wall right here with uh, the pitch of the roof and everything that we're going to have to do here I had to make this wall a little bit shorter which will be okay because there's not anybody that's going to be going through this door here that uh, ever played professional basketball so we, we will have the height that will be acceptable for what we're doing here. We've got the studs laid on the floor and I put uh, a couple blocks underneath the top plate there to hold that up and we're just bumping the, the studs against the bottom plate. I'm going to just leave this screwed down and I'll nail together the, the top plate to the studs and then I will unscrew this and stand it up and shoot the bottom plates on and I'm thinking about putting a an inlet brace across here and across here. This is a one before, what I've always called an inlet brace. I can use this brace when we start to plumb this up on this corner here. We can nail the nails in down to the uh, bottom plate. The, this plate will be anchored to the subfloor. This is what my dad did for many, many, many years. This is his style of framing. Uh, he started framing in 1946 in California. Now this is rough sawn lumber cut on a band mill that we're using here. We're trying to save as much money as we can for the price of lumber. Uh, we were fortunate enough to be able to uh, to get some rough sawn lumber or band sawed. It's not real, real rough, but uh, we're about ready to raise this wall. We've got this swept off and I put a, a block here to keep it from falling off of the subfloor. Sometimes that has, that has happened. And uh, there's something I can do to keep it safer. And I have a, uh, the two before is just screwed in, and when this wall stands up, this two before will slide across the ground, and I could screw it into the, the joist here and have it stabilized. In anchoring a stick framed wall that's vertical, your studs are vertical, they're not going to settle, they're going to stay where they are, and you're coming against logs that will settle. You have to make an allowance for that. And what I do, I cut a slot in the stud that goes up against the log wall, and it, the slot is wide enough so that the screw that I put through there, the threads won't hang up anywhere in this slot. And I've put a little washer behind the head of the screw and it's just up snug against the two before, but it's not buried in there. This screw connected to the log, as the log settles, can slide down this slot. The stud is nailed through the top just like you normally would. And at the bottom, I've got it anchored in there real good. Now I don't have to worry about anything hanging up. I've got, I think there's five screws that I put uh, in the end stud. I've done this before and I don't ever have any, any problems with anything hanging up on the log itself. It's, it can settle. There's nothing in the way to 
cause any binding or anything to happen there. We've got our, what I call an inlet brace or a cut-in brace. This is kind of a, an old way of doing this way my dad taught me back many, many years ago. And you set the skill saw the depth of your one by and put it on an angle. I like to cross three to four studs. Uh, there will be a short stud in here. This is a window opening. And so it'll actually be crossing four. And we just tack a nail in there. We don't drive it all the way in. Uh, we use this to plumb the corners. I've got a, a two before leaning up against that where I can actually push that corner and put my level up there and check it to make sure that it's plumb. And when it is plumb, then Brother Wayne can nail these off. Now I'll, I'll leave this stud unnailed because I'll have to put a, a two before across here, window stool and frame it in. And I may have to move this stud one way or the other and I can just take my skill saw and just make a little cut right here or here, whichever way I need to go. But the others we can nail in solid and that'll hold that corner plumb. Now, I've got four braces in these three walls. Now the old framing code that my dad went by, we would put one of these every 25 feet. That's what he said that they would carry in a wall. We have a 16 foot wall, but we've got one on either corner. So that should be pretty substantial as far as holding that wall, the long 16 foot wall plumb. So we're going to plumb this up and Brother Wayne can nail these nails in. Bottom one first. Yeah. Uh, that's right there. Right there? Right there. Okay. That's got it. It's nice and plumb. So now we can do this wall here and uh, then we can tack in these these three or two braces actually. Now I'll check corner then I'll check corner down there and we'll split the difference if we have to. We've got our uh, settling taken care of with the slots and the screws and the little washers and now we have to deal with this wall right here because the joist and the rafters will set on top of this wall. And I have a four by four beam that has been cut and we've got, I'm not sure you can see them. Those are some screw jacks that go through and we'll tighten that nut up when we get it all set. I've got six of them down through here and they go through, you can see that hole, they go through the beam and they will support that beam and allow settling. I'll get up there and show you what I'm talking about. I've got some steel plates that I have drilled with a half inch hole here and I countersunk some holes for uh, be able to put some screws and screw this plate to the bottom side of the beam. I've got it upside down. And this just slides right through that hole and that goes up in the beam and this, you're looking at the bottom side of the beam, but as this beam settles, this nut can be loosened and let the beam down. Now we'll be anchoring our joist on top. Well, this is the top, actually. I've got it inverted. It's top down here. The joist and the rafters will set on top of that and they'll be anchored solid to the cabin. With, uh, with this system here, we can lower this beam and keep it lined up with the settling on the cabin. Now this will come out. We'll just set it right here in this hole. And I countersunk this so that that nut won't interfere with the settling. And that plate will actually rest on top of this nut and it can just be loosened off as the settling takes place. And now we've got to put this beam, turn it over, and line all of these holes up at the same time, which may be fun. Okay, let me find me a place to put my foot. 
Right. Reef, okay. How are you making it? See, this has got a bow in it, so we may have to start at that end and work work it way back. I started here and on this one. Okay, it's not that heavy. You do what you got to do. I can hold it up. Okay. Let her down. Take uh, something and pry this thing over. Now, you can take a hammer if you want to on the top side of those of that bolt and. Uh, The, if, if you bugger the threads on the top side of that nut, it's not going to matter because they're going up in the, the timber. Right. Do you need a hammer? No. Okay. No, we're good. It's just we probably need to. Yeah, I'm just. I was just holding. Down. Yeah. That one's good. I'm good here. Let me screw that over a little bit on this one. I've got these going here. <clears throat> I think that's that one. Yeah, these are all going. All right, so that should be about it, Paul. We're going. Yes, you know, a little persuasion. You're doing good. I'm there. I'm down, brother. Good deal. <laughs> That's straight too, brother. Now, we can raise or lower that with these nuts here. And uh, we can make that just as straight and pretty. That looks good. Bearded Carpenter, Paradise Point, episode 13. <laughs> Shoot, that was a little too easy. Let's take it off and do it again. We can do that. You want to? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, me.